Mahalo, mahalo. Good morning, guys. We are here in Hawaii. Aloha. I know I said mahalo before. I said thanks in the airport, but yeah, here we are. I'm in a condo. It's like 4 a.m. in the morning. So we're still a little bit jet lagged, but we're here. Check out the mountains. They even light up. So yeah, hopefully you can see me. It's a little dark. Because yeah, look at that. Maybe I'll take another view when it's bright and early here. It's supposed to rain all day. Fingers crossed it doesn't. We're gonna go visit Jurassic Park, see the movie set, drive around the fam, and then uh, enjoy Hawaii. More things to come, so keep watching. As big as you. Look at that. <laughs> this is my McDonald's oh, breakfast. Look at that. Rice, spam, egg, and, <laughs> <laughs> and some special mild pleasant picante sauce. There's two of them. And Portuguese sausage. Only and here pancakes. in Hawaii. And pancakes a little bit. Amazing breakfast in McDonald's. We had spam, Portuguese sausage and egg. Tremendously good. Only here in Hawaii. So now we're heading over to um, Jurassic Park. Lula Ranch, I think how you pronounce it. Look, I have the park. Look, I already have the poncho. Katie's ready, right, Kuya? You ready? Ready to see some dinosaurs? Let's go. So we rented this beauty, Tesla. Figures, we're in Hawaii, might as well go out, all out. Experience. Elon Musk's creation. <laughs> All right. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh my goodness. So here's a bunch of tours that I could book with them. And this is what we got. The UTV Jurassic Park tour. I'll be the driver. I think there's a tour guide and it comes with free lunch. Well, not free necessarily because you pay for it, but still. That's it. Here's the map. The horse is. It's a little foggy up there. Still raining. Slow down a little bit.
Good morning and aloha. Aloha. Aloha, folks. I want to welcome you guys to the beautiful, cool Aloha Ranch. We're having ourselves a beautiful day. Rain or shine, we're going to be heading on out. You guys are fine with the rain? Yeah. Now you better be. <laughs> to my right, I'm going to introduce Robert. Everyone say aloha, Robert. Aloha. Along with Robert, you're going to have Bill. Can you say aloha, Bill? Aloha, Bill. Robert and Bill, you guys can just call us cousins. We are now your guys' family, or <laughs> Ohana, as we like to say here in Hawaii. I want to welcome you to Cool Lower Ranch, obviously. If you guys are here, you probably heard of this ranch if you watched a bunch of movies that we filmed here. Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, Jumanji, plus a bunch of other movies which we'll go through as we head into the valleys. But um, more importantly than that, this is a very sacred valley, so we just ask that you guys please respect and follow the rules and be courteous of each other. You're going to be driving your own vehicles, but this is a guided tour, so we ask for you guys' cooperation. I'm driving today, yay! You guys ready? 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 Yeah, you're a It's like a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> I've been driving all day. I'm going to just enjoy the views. These are just fantastic <laughs> views. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Uh, first and foremost, um, yes, I am wearing a trash bag. So don't ask me. I'm going to have a time over to Robert right now. He's going to go over a couple. Do you want to go first? Sure, yeah. All right, well, round of applause. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Ka'aba Valley. Um, when we're driving out through here, everyone notice by any chance a little pig statue on the mountain hand side there? If yes. you didn't notice it, we'll be seeing it on the way out of um, this valley here. That is called an ahu kwa'a. That is a, like an ahu would be an altar and kwa'a is a pig. So pig altar. Back in the ancient Hawaiian days, I was used as a physical representation of a um, land division. So we came from Kualo, where we all checked in from. We passed that alt, uh, ahu kwa'a, and now we're in Ka'aba Valley. So. Back in the ancient Hawaiian days, sorry for the history lessons and everything. The first stop is always history <laughs> lessons, then we get a little more fun. That's why we're here. Yeah, man. <laughs> and then, we don't care about Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> the valley in the ancient Hawaiian days was used to, um, as the Valley of the Chiefs, so initially um, to raise chiefs to t uh, learn how to take care of the people, take care of the land, and also learn the art of warfare if that time needed to be, and also the art of navigation. So, have anyone seen like the movie Moana? Mm -hmm. Pretty much all the mo like the looking at the stars, looking at the oceans, and so on. There, those are actual like Polynesian and Hawaiian um, skills that was needed for navigation, especially coming over from Polynesia, and then they finally came into Hawaii. So, um, all those skills from the movie. It's not just Disney little little magic there. Mm -hmm. There's actually something they use. Um, not this is not only where the chief and even a king Kamehameha the um, third was raised, but this was also the place on um, top of these hillsides here. There's numerous amount of caves. Um, this is also a place where they were laid to rest as well. So when the time came, when the time came, it was the duty of a loyal, uh, let's say a loyal person to the chief or king to take the remains because the Hawaiians believed their bones held their mana or energy. So they didn't really want any rival chiefs or rival like areas to harness or even tamper with that power of that last chief or king. So person will take the remains, go up to the mountain, bury them inside one of the caves, and uh, for children uh, purposes, uh, take an express route down to the um, ground there. So, but it was a very, um, honor. it was a really big honor to be the last one to see it there. Matter of fact, when I pass away, it's actually Bill's responsibility to take my remains up to the mountain. <laughs> and I'm just going to go to a different island. <laughs> <laughs> Newlyweds, he's going to push it down. <laughs> We're gonna do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. He's gonna be the, the actor.
just saw that video, I tripped. <laughs> I was running too fast. But yeah, check it out. You guys gotta do this. It's not cheap, but it's worth the experience. Those were the initial places where each one of those scenes were taken from um, each one of those movies. So, notable movies would have been like Mike and Dave Meets Wedding Dates, a little fun raunchy comedy, uh, 50 First Dates, everyone's a fan of that? Uh -huh. Anyone not fan of that? I can't watch it. Huh? I can't watch it. Oh. Okay. You're missing out. We gotta got uh, got <laughs> have to pick up someone here now. Oh no. <laughs> no um, also, we have the uh, Godzilla's footprints. Did anyone notice the giant footprints yeah. on the yeah. side? So, I saw it. initially, while filming, they were about 10 feet deep. Um, oh. Problem with that was um, we we're next to Cattle Ranch. So, oh, uh, yeah. yep. So, the film crew leave for the night, cattle come back in, people work at livestock is like, where's all the cattle at? <laughs> Oh. No worries, they were all safe. It took them a full day to get them all out, but the family called, called up the studios like, you guys gotta fill these things up. So that's why it's only one to two feet deep now. So that's why there's also a little asterisk at the end of uh, Godzilla 98 that says no animals are harmed during the making of this film. So, um, also movies like Jumanji, but I'm talk about this one right behind me here. Uh, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Just a small, low budget, kind of fun movie. But, uh, Longer story short, it's about halfway in the movie here. They're looking for blue inside a bunker. This is the bunker itself. A volcano explodes. Um, and as well, they're getting chased up by the dinosaur about halfway through. Spoilers for a three-year-old movie, by the way. Um, they start climbing out of the bunker. Uh, about halfway up this hill, there's a concrete slab. That's the top of the bunker. And that's the volcano there. They start running down. They get to the log where there's a gyrosphere. Get inside and head out right into the ocean there. Oh, oh, nice ocean. ocean. Ah, nice ocean. Just a little Hollywood magic. So they pretty much made, uh, again, Hollywood's pretty expensive, but they're pretty cheap sometimes too. So a little out of Photoshop happened over at this scene, as well as this bunker here. Actually made out of, um, looks like concrete, actually made out of um, plywood and a lot of paint. Oh, wow. Log here, styrofoam and a lot of paint. Oh, no. Vehicle here, actually inflatable. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just the tires, just the tires. <laughs> no, with that being said, um, all I ask is please don't, uh, before we all shoot photos, please don't climb on top of the cage, please don't climb inside the cage, and please don't climb on top of the log. And if any, anyone needs any help with any photos, ask myself or Bill. We'll have some little bit of time to shoot some photos, and then we'll have a little uh, fun little extra uh, little journey for us shortly after we head out through here. So, right. get some photos. That's okay. Yeah, this styrofoam. <laughs> is, I see the styrofoam peaking. Mm -hmm. It's amazing this what the Hollywood magic I'm telling you. I know, this is a massive styrofoam bucket. It's a real rock though. <laughs> this one's a real one. Yeah, but the logs. Plywood, <laughs> maybe plywood. One, two, three, aloha. Get the rock. Yeah. Yeah. That's the view right now. Awesome. You guys are lucky to work here, man. <laughs>
Someone's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky to live here. You know, part of our responsibility for living and working here is maintaining the land. And you guys, by coming to the ranch, help us to better preserve this sacred place, right? Do you guys do me a favor and look behind you? Robert, you know, you touched on it a little bit in the first area. You know, it's a very sacred ranch. This mountain, there's about 400 bodies buried up there. Wow. You know, the Hawaiian chiefs who were trained here, the servants would take the bodies and bury them in that mountain. It was symbolic. They believed when they buried them, them in the top of the mountain, they were placing them in the womb that led to the afterlife. So they believed they were closer to heaven, they were closer to the sky, closer to heaven than they were. And obviously, like you said, you wanted to maintain the mana. Right? So Hawaiian word of the day, mana. Repeat again, mana. 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 What does mana mean? Energy. Energy, Energy. Energy or spirit. spirit. In this context, we're going to use spirit. Hawaii is a very spiritual place. We're going to we're going to go over a couple more things on why this place is so sacred. You know, for a lot of you that are visiting again, raise your hands. This is your first time. The majority of you guys are visiting for the first time. She's from here. Uh, maybe I should have you come tell the story. You got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this land is very sacred. Hawaiians they pretty much believe that this is the Garden of Eden for them. This is where it all began. The first Hawaiian man was born over here. There's a story that tells that there was a goddess. She lived over here. She got pregnant. Her name was Ho'oku Kalani. Can you repeat after me? Ho'oku Kalani. That means maker of the stars in heaven. That's actually very good, by the way. Oh, Kukulani, she lived over here. When she lived here, this land was barren. Hawaii, you know, was all created by the gods, but it wasn't as green as it is today. It was all barren land. When she lived over here, she got, she got pregnant. Her first son, she named him Haloa, altogether Haloa. Haloa. She was excited for her first child. It was a boy, it was a man child. It wasn't a god, it was a man child. Unfortunately, when she gave birth to the kid, he died. So obviously, if any of you guys have ever lost a loved one, this goddess, she wasn't immune to the effects of losing someone. So she was crying over her, her son's grave. It was over here. And as the legend goes, she cried over the grave for about three days. After the third day of crying over the grave, the first plant of what it grew where the grave was. The first tree, the first plant. And that plant was the Kalo plant. That's where we get. You guys ever had poi? Mm. Who here has had poi? Huh? Poi, have you ever had poi? Who here likes poi? Usually when people start to put their hands down. <laughs> Boy, it's the staple food of Hawaii, of Hawaii and the Hawaiians. They believe the first plant that grew here was the Kalo plant, and it grew from the grave of the first man-child of, of the goddess. Um, anyways, the child sacrificed himself, came back to life as the first plant over here. The goddess got pregnant again, this time with another baby boy. This boy survived. What do you think she fed the boy with? Poi. The poi, the plant that grew from the first child's grave. So in a sense, all nature is descended from the first child, and the Hawaiians believe they're all descended from the second child. And that's the relationship between the Kanaka, or the Hawaiian people, and the land. So for them, it's more than just responsibility and stewardship of taking care of the place. It's a family matter for them. Their approach to taking care of the land is the same approach we have to taking care of a loved one. And that's where the mana and the aloha spirit comes into play. Hawaii is a very beautiful place, but underneath that beauty is the Hawaiian, is that uh, that mana that I was talking to about, that spirituality, their approach to the land of taking care of the land. We have a saying over here, repeat after me, Malama Aina, Malama, Aina. Malama Kanaka. Malama Kanaka. That means as you cultivate the land, you in turn cultivate yourself. So they believe that the better care that we take, or we take care of the land, the better person you become yourself. So there's that relationship with that. Thanks. Great tour guide. Make sure you make sure you look for this guy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I really do Look for this guy, tour guide, Woo! best tour guide ever. Mahalo, <laughs> take care. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed that little trip through Jurassic Park, Kalua Kuala Ranch. I don't even know if I'm, uh, I'm pronouncing it right. But yeah, you see, you see a lot of tours here that you could do. Um, 
the one that we did the ATV Raptor tour was pretty expensive but oh man the experience itself it pays itself fully you really gotta experience it I mean you could probably look it up on Google or YouTube but that doesn't do it justice so I think it's worth it especially if you want to learn about the history uh, and make sure you look for Rob and Bill I think that was the names two of the coolest hosts they knew their history and very knowledgeable about everything about Hawaii so you learn a lot so definitely recommend this place for those of you who come to Hawaii uh, come with old clothes because you will get wet dirty especially when it rained the other day today was a little rainy I'm glad it stopped but you're gonna go through muddy trails and um, you're gonna walk around a lot so I got my shoes were dirty so wear old clothes that's my only tip for you guys so anyway if you guys like this video make sure you hit that subscribe button the red button down below ring the bell so you get notified of all our future videos comment like and subscribe and share and I'll see you next time see you in more Hawaii videos coming up